Hello everybody, it's, it's me Akbar and also known as Dave and I'm teaching IELTS in Prof. Education for three years and I'm going to be your tutor in this webinar series or video lecture series. So if you've been keep watching all this series, last time I've explained to you how to write line graph task 1 essay with introductory knowledge. But this time we will continue with you guys and I'm going to explain a bit of bar chart fundamentals and also we are going to discuss some skills and techniques how you should approach the question by taking how to manage our time lessons. Okay, let's begin our lecture. So, as I mentioned in this lecture, you are going to learn a bit of more information about bar chart. So let me just outline our structure. So in this video lecture, you are going to learn following things. These are, you're going to learn how to approach the question by understanding the bar chart question. It looks like the layout and the structure. And then I'm going to explain bit of difference between comparative type of essay and trends okay so you must know the difference between these two and uh, and a lot of students have confusion between these two I'm going to clarify this and at the end of this video lesson you will have much knowledge about how to do this and after that I'm going to discuss a bit of time management skills that I find it very useful and obviously there's no right or wrong way approach. Anyone can have their own approach, but I'm going to share the tips which I used to do when I am writing the when I was writing task one bar chart or any types of chart question at all. And then I'm going to explain a bit of how to select the key features. So if you don't know what key feature means, I will really recommend you to watch the previous webinar about the line graph and I explain what the key feature means. And finally, we will go through how to write an overview by looking at one example and I'm going to write sample overview by teaching you how to write it effectively. Okay, that's all you're going to learn in this webinar. At the end of this uh, lecture, I'm going to give some suggestions what you should do. So please keep watching, you won't miss the most interesting part at the end. All right, let's begin understanding the questions. So, before I'm going to show you the layout of actual question looks like as a frame. So, if you're not familiar with bar chart question, usually a typical task one question will have a rubric on top not, I can't say it's usual, it's all of them. And then there will be illustration. So this is how bar chart looks like. And then some information regarding to the illustration. What each bar chart represents, that's an information you can have. But sometimes the bar charts can have not only one charts, one bars single types of bar, it will be multiple bars. If you can see there is a blue, different colors, and uh, orange and yellow all have got analogous colors. So what does it mean? It means, and there is another information below. It means sometimes bar charts not have only comparison. You not com only compare different uh, bars with different colors, but also you have to a uh, discuss the change over time. So change or trends, as I explained last time in our web webinar. So here, uh, the on the bottom, it could be information regard. Usually, it will be in numbers and dates, or it could be categories as well. But you can expect most of the time the dates. So for example, 2016, one the blue one, uh, the light blue, and then navy blue is going to be 2019, could be. It's like a change over time, could be expressed as well. So, here again, guys, so the bar chart question is not only comparison. You're not only comparing different categories, but also you have to discuss the change over time. 
And since I've explained to you about comparative and trends or the change over time, let me explain what actually this means. But before, I'm going to um, explain in more detail. So what's comparative types of essays in task one and what are the trends? So if it's trends, so trends is synonym to change over period. So you will have similar to this, like of course this is line graph, but if you can see there is a timeline and there is a change in each period. So from 2007 to 2019 there's been various changes. So that's how you can differentiate the trends. Now have a look at the next one. In here there's nothing available about the time. We don't know which years, which dates, which months is that. The only thing we can see is the bars. Here we can only compare. This is comparative types of essay. So some people ask me, or some of my students relate to me that, is it possible that the bar charts are only about comparative or is line graph only related to the trends? And I say no, because it doesn't matter what type of task one question you see. Of course, I'm talking about the charts. You have to look carefully because some of them could be comparative only, some of them could be the trends, and some of them even could be both of it. Okay, so you must know the difference. The main difference is that one of it, it shows the change over the period of time and another part only shows the differences. So usually you can expect on the real exam the combination of both. Why? Because it is more rigorous, more complex and it shows, it just examines candidates how that person could actually write in both ways. So I'm going to ask and test your knowledge whether you can differentiate between comparative only or trend only or both. So have a look. So after the time is finished you have to tell me the time. So this is only comparative because there is no time is given. Now have a look at that one. Is this trends or change over time or is it comparison or both? Okay, it's both. Now let's have a look at another example. All right, that both. One more time. So look at these old charts, the line graph. Is it change over a period of time or is it a comparison or is it both? That's only trend. Okay, I hope you understood how to differentiate between comparison and trends related task one question. Now let's come back to another section. So now it's time to focus how you could manage your time during the exam, how you should allocate. This is part of your organization and how you should manage your time effectively and efficiently. So have a look at the layout, typical essay written. So as you already know, the first paragraph is going to be an introduction, so you should spend approximately two to three minutes for that. Why? Because introduction is not a critical part. The only thing, the only thing that is required from you is this, just to paraphrasing it well and adding any missing information. So if you don't know how to write a proper introduction, please watch the previous webinar about the line graph and here I've explained 
you, I mean there, I've explained to you how to write introduction in a proper way, okay? Because in this video course, I'm not going to be explaining, I'm not going to be focusing on introduction because you should be familiar by now. For the overview part, you must spend maximum five minutes, but it's a good idea to spend for three minutes if you can. So it depends on what kind of overview question you have, because some overviews are pretty simple. Let's say about the maps and process it shouldn't take more than a one sentence, and it's pretty straightforward and easy, but uh, charts type of questions like this requires a bit of a uh, more complex overview. That's why you should aim to spend maximum five minutes and that's it. And remaining part is considered body part one and you should spend five minutes and another body part two you should again spend five minutes. So guys another reminder if you don't understand what is the structure means all this if you have no awareness of this, please again refer to the previous webinar about the line graph and I've explained to you how to organize your entire essay in a correct way. Okay, so you should watch back the previous episodes because all of these video series are connected with each other because I'm trying to build a foundation of knowledge in task one writing essay series. Okay. So, if you add up all this time spent on your work, you will approximately, or minimum, or at least, you have to get at least two minutes extra time. So, ideally, you will have a two or three minutes extra time. So, what you should do? This time must be spent for checking your spellings and grammar mistakes. And trust me, this is one of the most effective way to write your essay in a proper structure. Why? Because it is common among the candidates to make mistakes just by silly mistake with spellings and, and preposition or something and that when they check they they have got a higher chance of getting notice. And it could be a reason due to over panic or maybe a bit of stress and it's common for human nature when we write an essay sometimes we we'll miss out some parts especially when we are under the pressure okay so it's always a good idea to check some of your mistakes it may not look neat and tidy when you correct some mistakes but good news is even you have made some mistakes the correction gives you boost in your marks. It happened in me, in my experience, because I've written an essay and I made a couple of mistakes spelling and I spent time for checking it but still give me a good mark. Okay, So this is how you should organize your time. And one more reminder, it is all, not only for bar chart, it is related to any types of task one question. It could be the uh, graph charts, tables or uh, multiple charts. The only exception is maybe pros and maps because it may have a slightly different structure and I will explain you in uh, coming future video lessons or webinars. So keep following our channel and you won't miss this out. Now let's move to next the overall structure. So if you can see just by recap what we have learned so far and I explain how to uh, understand the layout of the question then I will look the difference between comparative and the trends and finally there was a time management question so now it's time to talk about selecting key features so what is this so I'm going to show you one example through the example I'm trying to explain you I will try to explain you how to find key features so, in the task one essay, please be careful, be cautious that you are not asked to explain every details. That is a not very good strategy. In the exam, you are specifically asked 
to select key features and make comparison if it's relevant. If you don't trust me, you can have a look on all the rubrics and all rubrics mention these words. So now we are going to focus how to select the key features only and make comparison if it's necessary. So first we're going to look through trends related key features. And if you don't know what's the trend, I have already explained to you trend is the change over period of time. So now we are going to look at how to select the features, the most important features, which is relevant to the trends. So now let's have a look at China only. So its starting point was 80.5%. 8.5% is actually the beginning point. And then you have to look at the turning point, which is 10%. So what's turning point? Turning point means some dramatic change happens. It will uh, just it was unusual point. Okay. It could be huge decline or it could be huge upward. So any change is actually turning point. And then finally end point. Is it a decline or is it growth? So in this case, it's decline. So very simple and straightforward. You should look for the beginning point, turning point, which is any change happens significantly, and then finally end point. So these are the key points which you should report no matter what. And the one in 2007, which is 8%, is not a key feature so it's okay for you not to mention and write anything about that part that's why i'm explaining to you that you should only mention key features and if it's not so critical then you should ignore this because you won't be getting a good marks if you keep focusing on too much detail on everything now, let's have a look key features in terms of comparison. So comparison, as I have explained to you, is nothing to do with the change over time, but it's everything to do about how to differentiate the different charts, different bars. So how they differentiate, which is the highest one, which is the lowest one. That is the main key point. So here, the highest is definitely the China and the lowest is 2% in 2007 in Japan. Now, let's test your knowledge, whether you understand it or not. So what are the year, what years are the key trend features for USA? You need to find the years, which is key feature trend, okay? Well, correct answer is 2001, which is the beginning. 2007, which is the turning point, it started to decline. And 2020, which is the end period. So 2010 is ignored. Now have a look at this one. What is are the key trend features for Japan now? You should look for Japan only. So that's 2001 again, beginning point. Turning point is 2007, which is again significant decline. And finally, 2020, end period. Now have a look at a different perspective, which is comparison perspective. So find comparison features for USA. Okay, that's 2001, 7 and 20. Why there are three? Actually, it should suppo it's supposed to be two, right? So, because the highest is 2001, it was the highest of all. And the lowest is, surprisingly, similar. 2000 and 2020 and 7 are identical, are the same percentage. And they are all, I mean, they both are the lowest one. So we have selected two 
data here. Now have a look in another one, this time in Japan, and make sure it must be comparison related. Well, that's obviously 2001, in which is the highest, and the lowest is 2007. So guys, this is how you should select only the key features related on trends and on comparison. Okay, so that's, I think, useful for you to write and select information effectively when you're writing task one question. Now let's move to writing an overview. So how to write an overview? So it's again to do with the key features and if you don't know how to write overview the structure and rules, you can again watch previous webinar on line graph and I've explained you what is overview and how it should be written, what is the purpose of writing overview. Everything is mentioned in detail in the previous episode or webinar. But now, again, we need to find the key feature, but this time you should look the most significant key feature. And what does it mean? It should be the key feature which is relevant to all, the entire bar, okay? What one thing you can say generally about the whole chart and the answer is all countries have declined over time so let's check this whether it's correct or not so if you look at the china 2001 and 2020 there's a definitely visible decline same goes for usa and same goes for japan they all of them are dropped it could not be significantly but they all had a decline now is this all no this is only the general significant key feature only related to the trend remember we don't have to mention only trend but we need to include about the comparative part as well. So if you look in comparative perspective, so in most of the period the China was the highest except 2001 and similarly the most of the period the Japan had the lowest one. So again those periods except 2001 again. So those are the one which is underlined, highlighted in red color are the key features which is generally possible to say or the most significant. Now let's put it in a writing form because in your essay you should write in a neat written form. These are just the points. So one more tips for you. First you should identify the key points first. Once you find the key points this is the part of the planning structure, you need to include all of them in your written need format. So to put in essay structure, we should add some cohesive devices. So if we add them, it will look like this. Overall, it seems that GDP rate in all countries have declined over time, while China has been the highest and Japan the lowest most period. So this is how you should organize and there are many other ways to organize your essay, but this is all about grammar, structure and range and cohesive devices. So if you want to learn more about how to write this in cohesively, adding devices, so you should subscribe to our webinar and the online classroom series. And uh, in there you can have a premium access where I can explain in detail how to write it effectively. Okay, so, but this is fundamentally helpful for you, for all of you, to get the overall, a general idea of how to write an overview. Okay, so I hope this lecture was helpful for all of you. And so, 
what you should do next. So you have some understanding about the writing task one bar chart and line graph as well if you watched previous episodes. So as a support, I have created some, uh, I'm, I'm trying to work, we are the Profi Education team working very hard to create extra resources to support you guys. So if you need to improve your vocabulary related on writing task one, especially line graph and trends, you can learn this with the platform app called Vocabulary Quizlet. So download the Quizlet app and I will link to, uh, I will, uh, you can just uh, search the Quizlet word and uh, you can find this on App Store and the Play Market as well. So once you download this app, you can have an access to the resource which I created. Some of them are publicly open, some of them only restricted to the existing students of Profi Education. But for you guys, I have made it available for all of you to get access for only line graph and task one related vocabulary. So what you should do, first, download the Quizlet app. Second, find the username, which is this, I have already shown you, Akbar underscore Badalov and with the capital letters IELTS. And you can find under the users panel. And once you found me, you can have, you can find line graph IELTS related the uh, cards, Quizlet cards and decks where you can practice all necessary verbs and adjectives and key vocabulary related to the line graph series and not only line graph, any writing task related vocabularies are going to be shared publicly for all of you guys to learn and practice and and this is uh, unfortunately only for um, uh, general public you will not get a full access if you wish to get a full access you must be either customer of Prof Education or you can contact to our administrative department and they can help you how to get access so it is not free of charge it is a premium service and that is not this is not an all we do have a online classroom series which soon is going to be opened on 1st of April and if you are existing Prof Education customer, you all have full access with the Pima features in this online classroom. So what's good about online classroom? So each week there will be uh, support materials. So this is just a beginner webinar video. There will be other videos and uh, worksheets and quizzes and exercises. And uh, another good feature is I'm myself personally going to check your essay. So essay checking service is also will be available. But at this time, only the Profi Education customers have got an early access. Those of you who are not customer in our center, please just wait. And once it's available to uh, to the market, you can get an access code. But for now, it's only available for existing customers for an early development okay so i hope that this video lecture was very useful for most of you and then um, i try to create some more video lectures and in soon i'm developing more resources to support your ielts learning journey and if you do have any questions regarding to this video lecture please feel free to leave your comments and I would do appreciate if you put the like button or subscribe to our channel to not to help us but to help others because if you put the like or the subscribe YouTube algorithm will display it in the higher places so it will be available to wider and bigger audience so you can also contribute to everyone because our main purpose is to contribute knowledge for everyone, especially in this time when it is impossible to join physical classrooms. Thank you very much again and see you in next webinars or video lectures.